most life-changing moment that I've had so far in my life. I like super depressed and like hurt about this whole thing. I can't even imagine the reaction of my parents or my siblings or just my family, what the reactions would have been if they would have gotten a phone call saying, hey, your son has passed away in a car crash. What's up ladies and gentlemen, today's you guys can see from the title, I am going to be telling you the scariest like thing, most life changing moment that I've had so far in my life. But before we do that, I am kind of hungry and a little story time slash mukbang video is not the same without food. Um, I got some leftover pizza from last night from my shift with my boy Thomas. If you're watching this, you're a real one. So yes sir, about to cook that bitch up real quick. Let's get to it. <laughs> If you don't know about this technique right here for reheating your pizza, if you a nasty ass, ratchet ass motherfucker, you just get some leftover pizza and you put that bitch in the microwave, there is something wrong with you, bro, and you need help. What you gotta do is get your bitch ass some ice. That was probably like way more than I needed, but it's all good. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and turn this thing on. You know, we're gonna let it simmer there just for a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and just put the lid on. Uh, and then once this starts getting foggy, that's how I know that it thing is ready to go and it is nice and warm. All right, I'm pretty sure on camera, you can't tell a difference from the last clip, but I promise you this thing is nice and hot. Stop the cap. <laughs> I'm taking off the lid and feeling it. And I don't know if you just saw that right there. We got some smoke coming out. So now we're chilling. So basically now, all you gotta do, right? Go ahead and grab your pizza. All you gotta do, man, throw that pizza on there. I prefer getting two ice cubes. Put one on each side. One up there, one down here. You put that motherfucker back on that thing. And now, as you can see, it's getting real nice and foggy up there. All that moisture that is getting from those ice cubes, we're gonna leave that in there for like 30 to 40 seconds. You don't need to do too much longer than that, but try to not do anything less than that, because then if you take it off after like 10 seconds, not everything is gonna be nice and cooked, you feel me? 2,000 years later. All right, after some time, you go ahead and take off the lid. And now, man, just look at how beautiful, look at how nice and melted it looks. Look at the cheese trying to ooze out on the side, man. Now that's a good pizza. All right, so welcome back for this time, guys, to a brand new YouTube video. Let me first start off by saying that I apologize, you know, for not uploading for so long. I felt like I finally was starting to genuinely enjoy doing YouTube again. Um, I was trying to be more consistent. I was uploading, you know, weekly as much as I could with school and with everything going on. And I had a real good run going, but then this whole thing happened. Um, and honestly, after this whole situation, it really uh, it just demotivated me and everything that I was kind of doing for a while. Um, but the reason why I say that this is the most life changing experience is because not only was I, you know, at the time I like super depressed and like hurt about this whole thing, but it also taught me a lot about just like life and myself in general. And I felt like um, it taught me that I'm more, that I'm stronger than I think mentally. Um, Cause this shit was a real, you know, damper in the mud for me, but um, yeah, now I'm grateful. Happy New Year's to everybody watching this video. This is currently being recorded on the 1st of January. I don't know what day I'll get it out, but hopefully this year uh, I am able to recuperate that energy that I had uh, during those couple of months where I was like uploading as much as I could because I really want to make this uh, dream a reality. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it for that. Let me go ahead and open up this ranch dip. Okay, what the f All right, we got it open now. Um, if you don't eat ranch with your pizza, bro, there's something wrong with you and you need serious help. I better not serious and stuff. I'm hungry as hell. I haven't had anything to eat yet. It's currently 12.15, so I'm kind of fucking starving. This is gonna be my breakfast slash lunch, so I'm gonna go ahead and try some of this uh, pepperoni sausage one. <laughs> But to get started, this all happened um, in November 9th. I think that's the exact date, actually. It just came to my mind right now as I was thinking about it. Um, and basically that day I had work um, and my girlfriend and I, we had planned that after work, we were gonna go eat. But yeah, you know, I went through my shift and I was doing what I had to do. You know, I was working, getting money. Um, and that day, the entire street of where my workplace was at, the power just happened to go out. No place had a power except for my workplace because we do have a backup generator where I work. But every other place, as soon as you walked outside, that shit looks scary, bro, like a zombie apocalypse. And let me just say, y'all, I'm a very like safe driver. 
you know uh, I've never ever been in an accident before this is my first ever one so I know what a lot of people are probably thinking like oh it's probably this dumbass is fault. he's probably like whipping that shit fast as hell no like I'm a, I'm a good driver um, you know I stop completely at red lights I do everything that I'm supposed to do but yeah so I get out at work and uh, the way that I go from work to my house it's very close to where I live. I only live like seven minutes away from work. So I kind of only have to take one turn. As soon as I get out of work, I basically uh, go straight to the traffic light. Of course, I take a left. I just drive straight for like five minutes, take one more left and I'm literally basically where I'm at. That's exactly what I was doing. Uh, but like I did mention earlier, key thing was that the power was out everywhere. So that means that even the traffic lights were not working. They were completely pitch black. So we were just doing right away. You know? So the first traffic light I go, thankfully there was no f dumbasses right there. But then as I'm going straight to that other traffic light uh, that I'm talking to you guys about that I need to take a left to go to my house. So as I got to the street um, where I need to take a left to go home, uh, there are two left lanes in that street. So I went to the far left lane and I did notice that there were cars um, all in front of me. There was cars uh, across from me. There was cars to my left and to my right. So obviously it's not going to be my right away. I have to get there, make a full stop, wait for them to go and then I can go. Or I was going to leave. You know, I made the complete stop um, and and then I looked around, I waited for all of the cars to go um, by me. So first were the ones that were across from me, they went. And then the ones to my left, they went. And then when I turned to see the ones to my right that were gonna also go, I saw a Dodge Charger barely pull up. So the car that was in front of it was leaving because they were there before that Dodge Charger. But that Dodge Charger had been there maybe for like five seconds after the car in front of it had barely started to go. So I was already there way before that Charger had even pulled up. So all the cars go and I'm like, all right, so now it's my turn. You know, I waited for all the cars. That Dodge Charger barely pulled up. So they clearly know that it's not their turn, right? Wrong. As soon as I'm taking a left, because like I said, it was my turn. I'm just pulling up to my left and then then I see the Dodge Charger start to move. But by that time it was already too late because the way that it worked is, um, like I said, I needed to turn it left. So I need to, you know, turn my car left, obviously. They were to my right, so they were just going straight. As I had already completed my turn, literally already on the other side of the road, Dodge Charger, instead of, you know, waiting like any regular person, because I had already completed the turn, they decided to speed up the car. So instead of waiting for me to just drive by and then they can, yeah, cause they look like they were in a complete hurry, bro. I, I bet you they didn't even make a full stop. And I'll tell you why right now. But instead of waiting, they decided to speed up and try to get in front of me, which then caused my car to get hit on the top right part of it. So like the passenger top right part. So it was like this, my car was, already in the complete turn they decided to speed up and as my car was already like i said completely turned they hit my shit and then there's this like cement barrier that's dividing uh one side of the street to the other side i got hit and she hit me so hard and this is why i say that there's no way that this lady did a complete stop she hit my car so hard that i literally jumped over the barricade and i landed on the complete opposite side of the street now thank god thank christ bro that there were no cars during that time that i got hit on that opposite side of the street because if there were cars right there i would have 100 percent hit anything that was there but thankfully there were no cars there so i jumped over the barricade and obviously i lost complete control of the car because i'm you know jumping over a barricade i can't swerve to the left or swerve to the right mid-air type shit. so i lost control but i managed to get a grip of the wheel and i landed on the side of the street i'll probably pop up like uh videos um that i have of the day after that i took like when it was daytime you can see literally all my oil all the oil of my car um that completely got drained out because um the bottom part of it i think my oil ah, damn i don't even know the name of the part because I th at first i thought it was just gonna be like um my engine was leaking oil or something but it was something completely else and when i first got hit bro i genuinely thought that this person was gonna do a hit and run because when i got hit i obviously immediately stopped the car put it in park i saw my car start smoking so i turned it off you know being scared that she was about to blow up on me or something and then her car literally landed straight from where we hit like she didn't swerve to the right she didn't nothing that's why i'm saying like there's no way this lady like stopped completely bro but yeah she kept driving slowly for a little bit so that's why i mentioned i thought that she was gonna fuck it and i was like what the f bro like are you serious so after i got hit the first person that just came to my mind was obviously gonna be my girl so i called her and honestly i didn't call her to try to like scare her or anything as stupid as it sounds the first thing 
that came to my mind was, dude, I promised her that we were going to hang out right now and go out on a little date. And now that can't happen because of the stupid ass shit. So instead of like thinking like, oh, what am I going to do about the crash? The first thing I uh, thought of was calling my girlfriend and telling her, hey, I'm sorry, but we can't hang out right now. I just got in a crash. And all she's like, what? Like, you're in a crash? And I was like, yes, like I just got into a crash right here leaving work. And then with no hesitation, she's like, I'm on my way. So she started driving towards me. I, the reason why it just gets me so mad was because as soon as the crash happened, I crossed the street. And then the first thing that I ask them, like a regular human being is, hey, are you guys okay? Like, is anything wrong? Um, because that's just what you do, bro. Like, what the f You're not gonna ask somebody like anything about anything else except their lives because that's the most valuable thing. This isn't like a f video game. I can't press square on my controller and respawn or some shit. Um, you only have one life. Cars, you can, you know, it sucks, but like I said, it's just materialistic things. You can buy another one, you can fix it, you can do whatever, you get what I'm saying? So I asked her like, hey, are you guys okay? And then the first thing that this lady does is she gets out of a car all mad and she's like, why would you go? My car, you hit my car and stuff like that. And then that's when in my head, I was like, are you serious? Like this lady is really valuing her car over my life right now. That shit got me real fucking mad. I try to stay as calm as possible, but I'm not gonna lie and say that shit didn't get me mad. Of course that shit got me mad. I wasn't gonna, you know, be like, no, you did it, no, I did it, because there's no point in that. That's what insurance is for. They're they're gonna handle the situation, you get what I'm saying? But I did try to defend myself a little bit. I was like, ma'am, are you serious right now? I was like, I was there far before you were. There was a car in front of you. I literally waited for that car to go, and then it was my turn. That was not your right of way. But of course, you know, a lot of people, when they're in the wrong but they're not gonna admit to being wrong um, so she kept blabbering on about how supposedly it was my fault and I was not about to deal with that so I was like ma'am it's all good I was like can I get your information um, and then she says what the hell she's like you hit me you give me your information first I was like, okay. I was like, it doesn't really matter who gets the information first as long as we get the information from each other. I go to my car, I give her my info, she gives me her information. And then I don't know if she thought that she was like gonna scare me because I'm young or whatever. When this happened, I was uh, 19 years old. My birthday already passed, so I'm 20 now, but you know, I'm still obviously young as hell. Um, but I was younger when this happened, you know, 19. So she kept threatening me about calling the police. And I was like, yeah, good. That's like, that's what we're supposed to do. Like call the police. Like we need a police report to look at this whole situation, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, we need the police to come. So she was on the phone. Um, I even saw her, like she dialed a number. I didn't need, I didn't get to see my, that was my fault. I didn't see if she dialed 911 or anything, but I did hear that she was like trying to, I don't know if she tried to make it seem like she was on the, phone with the police and she faked the whole thing because I literally heard her say things like yes hello officer I just got in a car crash here on whatever whatever street so I'm like okay she's on the phone with the police like there's no point of me calling them because she's already calling them I was like that's good you know we need a police officer to come and if they look at the damage which I'm gonna show the pictures up on the screen you probably already saw from the thumbnail I mean explain that makes absolutely no sense how I hit her because if I would have ran into her don't you think that her car would have swerved to the right and the damage of my car would have been on the front bumper because she's going straight and I'm going left. So if I hit her, it would have been boom. My damage would have been on the front bumper. She would have probably swerved, but no, all my damage was on my passenger top right side. And I was the one that got, I was the one that hit her, but I swerved to the left. How does that make any sense? It does not. So then again, like I said, I don't care about the car. I care more about human lives that were at risk that day. So uh, she had her um, daughter and her son, but they were a little bit older, um, in the car with her. So I went up and asked them, I was like, hey, like, are you guys okay? Um, and then the girl, she was just even crazier than the mom. I don't know if that was her mom or not, but the, the girl was even crazier than her. She started screaming at me too. She's like, no, no, no. She's like, you hit our car. She's like, you hit our car. And then she was on the phone with somebody as well. So I'm just like, okay, I'm not about to deal with this, bro. Like, I'm just trying to get the information that I needed and I'm trying to dip. Like, I'm not going to fight. You know, this is stupid. It's pointless. That's why we have our car insurance. They're going to deal with all this stuff. But then the kid, the, the, the guy, he's actually calm. And I asked him calmly, I'm like, hey, bro, like, are you okay? And then he on he was on the verge of telling me yes. Like, he, he was literally like, um, yeah, bro, like, I'm... And then as soon as he was about to say, like, I'm good, the mom or whoever she was, like, like pushed him to the side. And she's like, no, 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 no. Like, she cut him off. You get what I'm saying? As soon as he was about to say that he's completely fine. She's like, no, 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 no. But, 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 but my daughter, um, 
she just got done with physical therapy and we just got out of and i'm just like in my head i'm like bro what the f is wrong with this woman like are you serious like she doesn't want to take accountability so bad that she's bringing up shit that's irrelevant because yeah okay she came out of physical therapy or whatever what does that have to do with this bro i mean sure that the daughter was completely fine and she was they were walking around no injuries no blood nothing she was completely fine she was just trying anything and everything to try to make me feel bad and be like well you know what i did hit her or some shit but no i'm not gonna deal with that bullshit i know that i wasn't in the wrong so i was like all right i was like just give me your information man like that's all i need and this just made me appreciate everything that i do have so much more and it made me obviously appreciate life and that materialistic things truly at the end of the day they don't matter they can be replaced what matters is that you are healthy i can't even imagine the reaction of my parents or my siblings or just my family what the reactions would have been if they would have gotten a phone call saying hey your son has passed away in a car crash like that should just me up mentally for a good amount of time bro and that's why i was like so depressed um I, of course i was depressed at first of, uh, about the car but then like i said i realized what truly mattered was that i'm here and that my family gets to see me and all that stuff so once i realized that it just made, made me appreciate life and made me appreciate the little things so much more so uh yeah um this is probably not the most positive way <laughs> to start off the uh the 2024 year with giving you guys a story of how I could have died, but you know, hopefully the message is, uh, it's received a lot more positively than the video itself, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm going to try a lot harder this year to be more active and try to make this YouTube thing a reality dream, um, or a dream, make it a real, uh, you know what the f so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Later.